Okay, so um, I would like to introduce the EOS project. Um, it's a superconducting uh, data center. We made it together with Carl Rabe from Wooden Data Center and with Ellen Ber Beresford, uh, who is not here today. Um, so, what is the motivation behind making a superconducting data center for us? Um, it's this picture. Um, I think that a big issue of our generation is to make the world more sustainable for us, but especially for our children. I've got three at home. So it's for me, it's also a personal issue to, to do something, to leave something, uh, something good. Um, you can see the problem and the real problem here. Um, we have got more and more data centers because everyone wants to, to watch Netflix, to use Facebook, to use Google, to use other services, 5G, and so on, and so on. And as you can see here, um, the power demand of data centers will increase. That's a fact that will be. And there are more and more data centers. So on the first side, it's a problem of uh, delivering the power for all these data centers. And as you can see here, the, the pie chart, it's the pie chart from uh, Meta. If you already use almost um, renewable energy, you don't have this efficiency issue. You don't, you don't have scope to emission problems. But as you can see, the, the, the thing is, the scope three emissions become even more and more uh, interesting here. So how can we solve this. Our approach is holistic, so we try to optimize every scope and everything in the system, and this can be done by uh, superconductors. So what are superconductors? The main benefit uh, or ability of superconductors is that they have completely no electrical losses operated with direct current. So regardless of the length and, um, and the voltage and the power, you have no losses at all. Um, it works with this uh, temperature I mentioned, 77 Kelvin. It's uh, like minus 321 uh, Fahrenheit. And you have an extreme power density of uh, up to 60 ampere per square millimeter. So you can see on the on the uh, right side this picture. Um, it's uh, aluminum bus bar which um, carries 20 kilo ampere, and above is a superconducting bus bar that um, also carries 20 kilo amps. So you can see the relation and the dimensions here. Um, another benefit is um, that you can reduce the scope three emissions. Why? Why is that? Um, you will see on the next slide. Um, you also have a higher rack density because you don't need the um, power supply units anymore, no power shelves. Um, you have uh, the energy savings within the power line due to the uh, reduced uh, electrical losses. So, that's a scheme of a data center, how it, um, how it looks like today. You have a lot of transformation steps. You have to, to um, transform power from AC to DC to AC. You have to, um, to regulate the voltage and so on. And this is how a data center could look like if you use superconductors. You have no AC converters anymore, no, tra no transformers. You have no power losses in the line. And the superconducting modules, they are reusable. So if your data center is like uh, end of life, you can just um, demount the, the um, 
superconducting modules and to reuse them again. You have much less um, material that is needed to produce such um, a power system, less components, and this um, significantly improves the scope 3 emissions. The other thing is um, we um, calculated that it is also very economical. Uh, we calculated this for an 80 megawatt data center with um, German electricity prices. And as you can see here, the bigger the data center is, um, the more this would be a good deal. So that's especially interesting for hyperscalers. Um, as you can see here, we, we have got um, savings of 4 million euro, which is 4.5 million uh, dollar approximately. It means like uh, 45 million dollar in savings uh, over 10 years just by using this system. So here is uh, how the system would look like. Um, you've got um, on the right side the picture of a superconducting module. That's the real picture. Um, you have a cryostat, a double walled cryostat, uh, where the a steel cryostat, where the liquid nitrogen is inside. And the um, superconducting uh, tapes are arranged. And this means that we need to cool it down with liquid nitrogen. Liquid nitrogen is um, an industrial waste product today. So it is very cheap. It is uh, available almost everywhere. You can go from the battery or even from the power generation directly to the rack with these tap-offs. You see these are the blue ones. And that's it. So. Another thing that we would like to introduce with this concept is to make the data center of, out of wood, out of a cross-laminated timber. There are already um, prototypes or data centers here that are um, using this, this kind of, of uh, material. And the next thing is that um, we use a gas-powered cogeneration that produces electricity all the time. It is um, much better for, for costs, for OPEX and for um, even for CAPEX because you don't need a big diesel generator that is only running two times a year or something. You just can use the gas generator on demand. So. Um, the challenge that we have on, on this thing is think out of the box, leaving the comfort zone and just make this concept happen. Thank you very much. Thank you. I think we, we have a time for one question. Anybody have a question? You know, he's, um, can you hear me? I can hear you. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you still have to transmit the power from the solar stations or the wind turbines all the way. So liquid nitrogen, in you know, encasing that the entire distance is a tremendous challenge technically and economically. And what some people are saying is that why not electrolyze it, produce green hydrogen, and pipe it through existing natural gas lines, and then convert it at your, uh, close to the data center. You build a micro uh, power plant. Then you can put your cryogenic superconducting from the close coupled microgrid power plant to the data center. Um, okay, so um, what was the, the, the question on, on that? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Why not transmit green hydrogen through pipeline, which is much easier technology yes. than what you're proposing? Um, that's a good question. Um, we thought about this, and um, it is also possible. Um, this concept with the um, liquid nitrogen, we already proved that in an industrial environment, in real production, it works. Um, the nitrogen is very cheap. And 
almost everywhere available. Um, if you do this with uh, hydrogen, it would be even better because the, the, the temperatures are even lower. The lower the temperatures are, the better does the superconductor conduct, the more power. This is uh, indeed also possible. Um, we decided to um, take the, the, the nitrogen here in this concept because we proved that it worked and to not bring too much innovation into this concept because we thought that this is, uh, for the first step, this should be enough. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you.